daily news video. We're going to talk about the upcoming patch that is coming next week. And we're going to look at some comments from the developers on some of the insights on what they're going to be looking at when they make balance adjustments to the Shuri deck and the Thanos deck on maybe how they're going to adjust Thanos, I'm not really sure. But first things first, I want to draw your attention to the best deal uh, that we have for the entire month. It is for 700 gold. You get 600 collector tokens, 65 boosters, and a mystery variant, and it's 200 credits. And in my opinion, this is the best uh, bang for the buck for the entire month outside of the battle pass. I still think the battle pass is the top dog, but other than uh, the battle pass and the other uh, offers that we have for this month. This is going to be the best one. I do not like uh, this one here at all from a progression standpoint. Now, if your thing is variants, then this is a good deal, but this is mostly cosmetics. Uh, there's no collector tokens. There's no real advancement to your collection other than the 1500 credits. Now, uh, you do get a mystery variant with this and a lot of people you know, we're kind of upset with it. You know, like this person here, I uh, drew a pixel art Drax. I actually pulled the worst variant in the game and that is Morph. A unless you play Morph into a Cosmo lane, you never get to see the variant. And it would be nice if you had a variant Morph that maybe it would convert to like a rarer variant of the card that you got out of your opponent's hand so in in reality this is the worst right now worst variant in the game because it doesn't show up when he's played because he converts to the other card now also we're going to talk about this uh the thanos and shuri decks have both been more dominant than we'd like for the past few weeks the patch we're releasing later this month has significant changes targeting both decks they've also mentioned that there's going to be some sort of changes to matchmaking and the rank system and all of that i believe that this patch is going to be coming on the 21st and that is because of the variant rush and uh all of the steampunk variants so my best guess is that that patch will be happening next Tuesday on the 21st. And that is also where we're going to be getting our series drop. So I wanted to talk about the series drop and uh, saving collector reserves for that. Uh, right now I have 61 uh, collector reserves saved. Uh, you may or may not want to save any collector reserves, specifically if you're not pool three complete. I don't really think there's much of an upside uh, but if you're pool three complete like I am, I'm going to be saving uh, those reserves. That way I can get the ones that drop from four to three quickly. I already have Orca and Atuma, but I do not have M'Baku. So I should be able to open up, let's see, like four, four-ish, you know, on average four collector reserves. And then I'll get my M'Baku and then I'll be back to being pool three complete. Now there's something interesting, and we're going to talk about Saron, whether or not he's worth it or not, uh, is the way that the system works right now is collector reserves open based on the context at the time of opening, but they are actually, you know, according to Ben Brown in, I guess this is back in January, we are working to make the opposite true. Uh, so I believe they want to, to do a system where it does not encourage hoarding. Uh, I'm hoarding, you know, I will open all 62 when the series drop. Um, not a lot of notable cards here. Uh, Atuma does see play in a Shuri deck. Mbaku does see play inside of a, a Cerebro 2 deck. Orca, in my opinion, is, is probably just not great. Probably needs a boost. I haven't seen a lot of people use Orca uh, with any success. And then as far as the cards that are going from Series 5 to Series 4, uh, the following cards, Zabu, which was Battle Pass card, Sauron, Shadow King, Shanna, and Dazzler. Now, don't see a lot of play on Shadow King, Shanna, or Dazzler. I mean, I think there's some situations where they're good. I just don't see them a lot. And then the question that comes up a lot is Sauron worth uh, the 6,000 tokens? No. Is he worth the 3,000 tokens? Not really. Zabu, maybe. Now, I just want to talk about, in general, is any card worth 6,000 tokens when they come out? Well, I mean, uh, the three cards that don't drop you know, which would be Thanos, Galactus, and King are going to give you the best value because they don't drop, right? 
any card that is 6,000 tokens will be 3,000 tokens in about two months. And then maybe three months after that, it'll be in series three, which is potentially free and not cost any tokens. So uh, unless you're like, you know, you know, pool three complete and you already have all the big bads, you know, it's hard to justify the 6,000 collector tokens for any card. So the question comes up a lot is that, is Sauron going to be worth uh, the 3,000 tokens when he drops. Well, firstly, we do know that there's going to be some sort of adjustment to the Shuri deck. And I don't know if that's going to be an adjustment to Shuri or if that is going to be like a reduction to Red Skull. Maybe they make Red Skull a six cost or maybe they make Red Skull 14 power. I mean, we can just speculate. We're going to have to wait to see, but it looks like there's going to be an adjustment that changes the way the deck works. And Sauron may or may not be more or less attractive. Now, my experience with Sauron is that uh, the Shuri build without him is probably just effective. Um, right here is a typical Sauron build, which has very good numbers and good results. And I did climb. Now, where this deck falls short is with Shang-Chi. And uh, in, in a vacuum without Shang-Chi, this is probably one of the most powerful builds out there. And it just ramps out and puts out tons of power, specifically on turn five with a, usually a 30 power Red Skull, and then it's copied on turn six with Taxmaster or Arnim Zola. So it's a very powerful deck, but Shang-Chi uh, ruins this. And I actually think this is a better and just a, as effective build right here. Uh, the problem with Sauron is Sauron does not positively interact with two very important cards, Armor and Cosmo. And so this build, is in my opinion just effective uh it provides counterplay and uh you know with armor and cosmo plus cosmo is very useful to play inside of a lockjaw lane if you're playing against thanos uh weakest card on this build is polaris uh, i've seen a bunch of different versions of the same build where instead of polaris they run captain marvel or instead of polaris they run typhoid mary uh, but this is a standard Series Zero build. So to answer the question is, I, I really don't think that uh, Sauron is worth uh, the 3,000 tokens when you could just build the, the non-Sauron build and have armor and Cosmo, and it's just effective. Uh, I feel like a lot of people have Zabu, but uh, I don't know if I would spend 3,000 on Zabu unless you already have like Darkhawk or something and you want to play a Darkhawk deck. But Zabu is still a useful card that sees a lot of play uh, now that he has been nerfed since the patch. Other thing too, I just wanted to talk about King. Uh, I was a little bit worried about King's effectiveness. Um, I, I was not sure if the cube saving mechanic on King was worth just not having a card in your deck. And the numbers seem to have stabilized a little bit. And I also wanted to draw your attention here to Master Mold stats. Uh, it seems to me that when a new card comes out, uh, the stats are not necessarily good until we know how to play them and have an optimized build. And it looks like the stats for King have drastically improved. Uh, personally, I like Thanos, then Galactus, then King, uh, but to each their own. And then also there potentially is going to be a uh, Thanos nerf, which we're going to talk about because the developers actually kind of gave some hypothetical situations on how they look at nerfs. And uh, he also talked about one of his frustrations uh, with Thanos in a hypothetical. So I wanted to read re some of these dev comments because a lot of people are reluctant to purchase anything related to the Shuri deck or the Thanos deck because we don't know what's going to happen. And I think that's a legitimate concern. And this person asked a question saying that, you know, they're a big fan of Ben Brode, uh, purchased my very first uh, Series 5 Thanos card, having lots of fun. They saw that there's upcoming nerfs planned for the Thanos deck and the Shuri deck, which may not be Thanos or Shuri. I, we actually just do not know, uh, but they actually talk about it a little bit later. Uh, somewhat regretting my months of saving tokens to purchase Thanos. I remember Hearthstone would give out dust to cards that were nerfed. Does the team plan on any type of nerf compensation for players who use tokens to buy exclusive four or five before major nerfs? And the answer outright is no. They do not give refunds. And, and they have a hard policy on this. 
But I will add that the goal of the balanced team is to find healthy places for cards to land and thrive, whether it's a big bag or not. We want you to be happy with your cards. If we make a change that too dramatically impacts the win cube play rates of a card, we'll consider a buff once that proves out. And I feel that, you know, I've been playing the game since the game came out in soft launch, which I think was May of last year. So I think I've been playing the game for 10 months. And I, I want to say that largely this is true. When they do a balance adjustment uh, to a card, the card is generally still playable, uh, but not to the extent that it was oppressive before. They usually take oppressive cards and they balance them down and they become just playable cards. Normally I'm like, second dinner does a great job and this and that they did not do that to leader uh they really changed the way leader now he's like a weird version of claw i think the game is better without leader and we're going to talk a little bit about leech and i'm not sure if they need to change leech i i wonder if the problems that we're having with leech is more of a lockjaw or a quinjet or a thanos stone problem than it is a leech problem because leech has been in the game for a long time you know series two and uh, Leech has not felt the way that he does now. Mostly, he feels like an unfun card. Absolutely. I, I don't like the experience uh, when I'm uh, turn three or turn four Leech, uh, you know, because they placed a free stone or one cost stone into a lockjaw lane. It just feels random and a little bit unfun. But so the main purpose is what he's stating here is that the cards are still playable. And I have to say that that has been largely been true uh with the exception of leader maybe they need to give leader a boost because the current version of leader is not great so the question came up is like um when i'm going to summarize the question the question is is like uh when you guys are playing the game uh do you account for your personal experience and your personal feelings towards a card it says i recognize probably needs to be some diplomacy when you're potentially complaining about your own game i'm curious who hates the current meta what cards infuriate you how do you keep your own frustrations uh, out of the balance discussion or do you include them in the discussion and uh, do you ever see an interaction that you're you didn't account for and think oh no how do we change this without upsetting half the player base uh my group of friends complain about cards that are dominating them all the time do you guys have the same uh, kinds of uh, conversations the off do you validate your annoyances with the data before bringing up into a balance meeting and um, the first response says as a player I feel this way as a developer I feel this way and then they talk about cards in this way and this person's not involved in the balance process but Glenn is and I, I wanted to read what Glenn said because it was kind of interesting because uh, he specifically calls out Thanos he says we do just as Daniela described in a balanced conversations too. And we have players with a range of climbing interests. Part of being uh, an effective designer and communicating games is being able to isolate elements, experiences, examine them from multiple perspectives. Complaints of I hate this thing aren't the kind of feedback one typically gives or receives because we learn how to give more useful context. As a balanced designer, and this is kind of interesting, I might tell the team over the weekend I found playing against Thanos frustrating because of the way Space Stone and Reality Stone made location variants feel one sided. I think I played less games than usual and the hot location felt less meaningful to build around. OK, reasonable enough. Then they also talk about data. Uh, hey, this is I actually really like this post right here. Are cards only nerfed buff due to primarily player request? Cards ever changed because of popular demand? Even the car is balanced according to data you see. I know you read tons of player feedback on cards, but the feedback ever become a primary reason for change? And actually the answer is largely no. I, I actually thought that this was, uh, uh, he says the answer to this answer question is no. It's not very realistic, Sarah, that a card in all of the decks would be balanced, but the player base would have major frustration with but in such a hypothetical scenario, we would certainly be monitoring the card. But generally the answer is no. The primary role of player feedback in balancing is adding context to data. They care about data. 
I, I, I've known this about developers for a long time. They care about data first, and then they look to the community to find context for what the data means. Data tells us what's going wrong. Players tell us how they feel about it. And we examine both to find solutions we will believe will be satisfying. So I think that is excellent. Uh, I do want to note that there is a, um, a bonus 100 credits if you sign up or email for the SNAP newsletter. And then there also is a uh, survey and it's not on the Steam client, but there is a survey I would highly suggest going and doing that. Uh, they don't give you anything for feeding, for filling it out, but you can only do that on your, your phone. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is just something that I'm curious about. And I, I don't think um, like anybody has any problems with Sunspot. I feel like Sunspot is one of the most beloved cards and snaps, probably one of my favorite cards to play. How's the state of one and two cost cards? I ask this because for one drops, all I see is Sunspot in almost every game. I believe Sunspot is played in 46% of all games. Crazy, right? And then zero because of Shuri Deck, Iceman, Korg on occasion. For two drops, all I see is Armin, Scorpion, and Lizard. Who's satisfied with the state of these type cards? Shouldn't the other one and two drops be buffed for them to see more play? I mean, why can't Luke Cage and Black Widow be 2 2 instead of 2 1? I'm asking because there's a patch coming in sure. Thanos and Shuri decks need toning down, but a lot of cards need some help, in my opinion. I'd love to see a game where these cards are useful instead of I'm just going to slot in Sunspot and Lizard. And then the, the response to this is the variation is better than you describe. There's plenty of room to improve. We have some solutions we like and hear more about them soon. And uh, when it we're just talking about one drops, uh, I just would like there to be maybe some buffs to some of the other one drops so that we have more of a reason to play a one drop. It feels like when I'm deck building, uh, it's just like, ah, just put Sunspot in the deck, right? And you know, and then Hawkeye doesn't see any play, right? I mean, when's the last time you played Hawkeye? And I actually kind of want to play Hawkeye because, you know, I got a cool booster or cool variant, right? But yet there's like no reason really to play him, maybe others outside of a, a Cerebro three deck. And someone else made the point, you know, there's like all these discard decks and a lot of the discard decks are playing Sunspot instead of Blade because Sunspot's just a better card. So I don't know what the answer to that question is or if I even have it, because I, I really love Sunspot. It's just that it's, um, you know, Sunspot at 46% of the games can't be a number that they think is good uh and you know sunspot just is is great i mean there's course situations where you don't want to use sunspot typically decks that play on curve i uh, don't want sunspot um but if you're playing like she hulk um you know and trying to do something fancy on turn six and skip turn five sunspot is actually amazing all right we're gonna wrap up the video here we got this king variant where it says your opponent plays arrow and i just want to play this clip about leech i, I, I got a giggle out of this here uh, <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. <laughs> I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. <laughs> well, now it's time for the giveaway. Uh, I really hope you liked the, this video today because if you did, you are in luck. For every single person that likes this video today, you will be getting for free in your account a mobile boomer variant, pixel variant, right there, right? Uh, I guess on reveal, it puts a Ken doll in your hand. This is not a scam. Thank you for making this. Uh, it's got the salmon shorts, everything like that. I just think that's super funny. All right, let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep it gaming. Bye for now.